This year is about pursuing something great. This year is about the dream that I've had for as long as I can remember. This year is not about showing up. It's about making a statement. Trust me when I say this. The time is now. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel now. Uh, I done did it. I done did it. I done did got gyno. After all these years, three years, three and a half years of uh, priding myself on never getting it, I got it. Uh, maybe to my no fault of my own, and we will explain that through the video, but I got it. I got back in gyno. I uh, we just kind of look at, obviously as you do as you get leaner, you kind of look at your physique a little bit, and I just looked at my, uh, I thought my right nip was poking out, and it looks a little bit swollen. And I thought, oh, it feels a little bit swollen, whether or not I was getting into my or not. And I did it, I grabbed it, and I went, fuck, there's a lump there. I've never felt a lump under my nipple before. I've always, like, checked them. Never felt sensitivity, never felt any lumps. And uh, I got it, and I was like, shit. Little, little soft little lump. Fortunately, it was soft. And we'll go into that a little bit. Uh, but this is my story over how I got it and got rid of it in about three days. So panic is over. Let's get into the workout or we're just talking through it as we go. It's the formation of like that glandular tissue, that breast tissue. Uh, and you basically get it from just imbalances in hormones. You can get it from, I think you can get it like downstream IGF and GH. I'm not 100% sure about that one. Um, in my case, it's specifically estrogen related. Normally, pretty high estrogen, like estrogen type side effects, fuzzy nipples, gyno formation. Um, and that's, that's essentially what's happened here. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about why. Probably get through a couple of sets first. I want to get into this workout feeling good. Um, but essentially, a lot of people have it. You can actually have pre-pubertal pre pre so you can actually have it without the use of steroids in a lot of men's cases. Like, it is steroids, you know, it's the, putting in too much testosterone, not, not accounting for that estrogen, not having an intelligent cycle design. Um, but also, it can happen just naturally, and it does happen naturally. I have a lot of people message me every child and say, I've got it naturally, you know, so if you're one of those people who has it just normally or about taking steroids, don't worry, you're not alone, there's a lot of people that have it. And there are a few ways that you can potentially look at fixing it. Um, if, if that's not so, but we'll go through that again. Seven back on there. <laughs> oh, baby. Good. 
Good. Strong. Not strong. This is more just like what I would do in this scenario. So take it as you will. I think my first line of offense, of defense, was and is uh, immediately attack what the issue is. If you're if you've gone from not having an to developing it, you need to attack what's developed it. Is it because your circulating estrogen is too high? You probably need to look towards you know maybe bringing that down. That's where you could look at Romsen. That's where you could look at Rinodex. Potentially Romsen being a better option. Doesn't mean that that'd be your your only choice or your your first and only choice. You can also look at Serms, uh, like Tamoxifen, which is actually going to bind into that nipple site specifically and potentially mitigate what's going on there. Um, why would we do that? Because potentially if a circulating insulin is not the issue, or perhaps you want to go in and bind at the nipple straight away, that's where Tamoxifen will come in. So for me, I think I would probably choose Tamoxifen first, which you could bring in 10 to 20 milligrams a day, see if there's any difference after a week or two. If not, you could potentially increase that. Uh, then I'd probably look at if that is not working and actually you just have continuous issues with it. Then you could potentially look at reducing circulating estrogen. That'd be where you look at a, rem a remsin. Or you can look at actually uh, relaxifene. Relaxifen. Relaxifene is a new one. Uh, more flexible dates actually recommendation it. I say new one. New in the in the verbal space, not new in actual space. Uh, and I've heard that has some really really good effects at reducing gyno symptoms, even with people who have had uh, gyno for a long time. So. What's your first uh, place to go? What's caused it? Um, you need to address it. How was that second set? Sweet. <laughs> oh. How was that? Well, I could have done with a hand, to Sorry. be honest, but fucking busy reeling or some shit. Sold my, sold my soul to the social media game. Sold your training platform to social media again as well. Probably gonna get told of where. I'm probably gonna get marked down for my chest now this year. <laughs> They'll be like, you actually were second. You just had slightly better upper chest. You would have just clinched that. You would have just clinched that, that, clinch that, that Olympia and beaten Seabun. We might have beaten off more than we can chew here. You reckon? Well, with that work that we've done, I don't know, we'll see. Let me stand on the bench, he's lifting up. Good. Yeah, that's nice. Gonna get that. Good, gosh. Come on then. One more. Take one yeah. more. Take one more. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh. So there's something wrong with this fucking machine. There's something wrong, like one side's been repaired and the other hasn't. Those of you who've had either pre-pubertal gyno, gynecomastia, or you've got developed gynecomastia, you've not addressed it and it's now become a hard line. Now there is a very, very different, there is a difference in feeling. You squeeze it, it's squishy, it's soft. That's potentially gyno that you can remove. As soon as it starts to solidify, the chances of removing that decrease and decrease and the chances of you having to have surgery uh, increase 
Uh, a lot of people do have the surgery, and once the surgery is done, they completely remove that breast tissue so it doesn't happen again. In fact, Joe, who we're training with, has had that gyno surgery before, um, and quite a lot of people do. It doesn't mean that it's the nice thing to do. You out, you're getting sliced open, your nipples are fucking lifted up, and you pull, they get pulled up, pull out the, the tissue, and then you've got to recover. But it's not at like the end of the world if you do get it. But if you've got that hard tissue, odds are you probably need surgery. But if you want to try tamoxifen and relaxaphine, um, I'd probably recommend relaxaphine first. Um, I would also recommend you check out more plates, more dates, a video on it specifically for everything you need to know about it in way more in depth than some ginger bloke in an orange t-shirt saying relaxaphine first then tamoxifen. Um, then potentially you can look at everything else that I've met list today. But if it's formed, you might get surgery. And that is the unfortunate truth of it. I was in that lucky stage where it was still spongy, it was still soft. I could feel that I could have just reduced this, and, and that's exactly what I did. And I'll tell you what I did once we get a bit further through this Alright guys, so pretty much the situation with me, I definitely can still see it, I definitely can still see it, especially on some of them poses, so it's going to take a, maybe another week to go. Um, the situation was, I was using four, 400 milligrams of testosterone, 600 milligrams of mastron, 100 milligrams of trend. So, in that cycle design, the mastron's m much higher, so we can modulate that androgen to estrogen ratio a little bit. The, I'm under the suspicion that... The mastron wasn't real, for one, because for being on that amount, amount of gear, a gram, I wasn't feeling like I was on a gram of gear. Like, there's a feeling that comes with it, a, you know, an aggression, a fullness, a thickness, which I feel much more now. Maybe it's even more apparent. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit leaner, but also because I've, I've swapped the mastron out. And I was kind of missing that feeling, which was my first alarm. And then I started to develop this gyno after the fourth week, because guess what, I'm using a Cipronate. So after four or five weeks, that plasma level starts to peak, and potentially serum estrogen starts to peak as well, which just tells me that the, the mastron either was not like 600 milligrams of mastron, or it was something else, or half dose, whatever it is, something that just didn't modulate my estrogen enough, and it's basically caused this. So my first point of action was to swap that mastron up because it wasn't real. I swapped it back to some Primo that I was using um, in my off-season, which I know was real because I could feel it. I've been using that now for like my ninth day, and I feel, I feel the difference, you know? And I'm on the exact same dose, 600 milligrams of that as well. So just swap that out. That's going to further modulate my hydrogen ratio within two or three weeks because it's an amphi molecule being Primo built in. So we had to assess the situation short term. For me, it was quite clear the... The, the issue was circulating estrogen. So we immediately put aromacin in, which reduces that literally overnight. I felt the swelling come down. The next day, which is today, I don't even, I don't even feel a lump. So it probably took three days for the lump to go, but there's just still sort of like a minor bit of swelling there, which might take another week or so to go as my circulating estrogen comes down. I probably should and could have used raloxifene, 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 whatever the fuck it is. Um, or a tamoxifen instead. Um, it just so happened that 
I only had a Roma on me and I didn't want to wait a couple of days to attenuate the issue. So I got straight into it and uh, attenuated it myself. So that's my experience of gyno. That's my horrific experience, which is not that bad at all. People get it. Um, people are more prone to it. I'm actually just not very prone to it. I've been very, very lucky. I've never had too much sensitivity at all. But generally speaking, I've been pretty good touch with. That's probably why it's happened now. Um, but that's some ways that you can attack it. And I'll pressure you to do some more research before you take any of that advice. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you very soon. We're getting into the, uh, the dog end of prep now. So we kick on. Peace and love everybody. Bye-bye.